Hi, I keep getting the low battery warning coming up on my car and that's even though I take it for quite long drives. Now there doesn't appear to be anything wrong at first glance with the charging system so at the moment I'm just suspecting that the battery is bad but we're going to try and test that today. Uh, I've been sent the Top Don BT200. We're going to test this and see why we might want to use this over just a standard multimeter for diagnosis. Now we can use a basic multimeter to check the voltage of the battery and that will give an indication of the state of charge but the multimeter itself presents basically no load to the battery so it doesn't give any information about the health of the battery. Similarly we can also check that the system is able to charge the battery because the alternator voltage will be quite a lot higher than the basic battery voltage but again it doesn't tell us much about the details of the system. So uh, what I am noticing is the battery voltage does remain quite low at, even after quite a long drive and we can check that here and you can see it's reading about 12.27 volts and I only took this for a 60 mile drive uh, not that long ago and when it was charging it was charging at about 14.4 volts which is quite standard for one of these smart charging systems um, but yeah let's see what the top don can do. So the back of this battery is hidden by this cover which we can't actually get to at the moment so the readings will be a little bit skewed by the fact that it's connected with a length of cable but we can connect up the tester here so the menu is pretty self-explanatory. We're going to do a battery test. This is a basic regular flooded lead acid battery. And this one is rated for 800 cold cranking amps. And I think what it's doing now is applying some quite high load in pulses to check the internal resistance of the battery. And it's telling us that um, the battery is 48% healthy, 555 cold cranking amps and the charge 47%. Now this, as I said, is after a 60 mile drive about half an hour ago. It just seems like this battery can't hold its charge properly, but it seems to sit at this voltage then for very long periods of time. So it just doesn't seem to hold charge above this point. Now there was also a cranking test and a charging test. Uh, so we'll see what that entails. Right, so it now says, please start the engine. So we'll try and do that. Right, so that's told us it took about four seconds to start the car and the cranking voltage got quite low, 9.14 volts. Um, so definitely another indication that possibly the battery is on its last legs. Let's see what the final test is. Uh, so this says charging test. Let's see what this is. Please start the engine, press enter to continue. So we've already started the engine. Now increase the RPM to 2,500 revs per minute. Um, so I might need a helper to do this. Uh, let's see what happens if we press it. Yeah, so we definitely need a, this is not a one person job unfortunately to do that test. But um, based on that, it's basically saying that the charging is normal. Before you connect up the final terminal just make sure that the polarity is definitely correct and I can hear things happening on the car. So that's everything all fitted. The next step on this particular vehicle is to then let the system know that we've got a new battery fitted. That way it can reset all of the parameters around the battery and we can do that with a program like Forescan on one of these Ford cars. Right, so we'll just test it again with the new battery in there. So we'll do the battery test. Regular flooded, still 800 CCA. And now I'll do the test. And there we go. Wow, that's a really high reading on the cold cranking amps. Two milliohms battery and fully charged. Let's do the cranking test and then we'll have a look inside this unit and see how it works. So it says everything's normal. The cranking voltage did drop a little bit, 9.86 volts. I think that's partly due to the fact that the 
Um, there is a fly lead between the battery and the chassis, and so we are probably getting a bit of voltage drop there as well. Ideally, we'd test this directly on the battery terminal. But anyway, that seems to work quite nicely. So let's take a look inside this unit and see how it works. Now we'll take a look inside this unit in a moment, just after a quick message from our sponsor, JLC PCB. If you ever want to get your PCBs assembled at JLC PCB, they now offer the ability to order parts from DigiKey and Mauser and have those assembled onto your PCB. And also, they've more recently added 3D printing onto their website, so you can get your parts 3D printed in various different materials for a very reasonable price. So don't forget to visit JLC PCB if you're thinking of getting some items made. Now these units are normally fairly straightforward in terms of operation. They need to measure the internal resistance of the battery and then they need to measure the cold cranking amps capability of that particular battery. So here's an insight into what might be going on inside the unit. So this is the equivalent diagram of a lead acid battery. It's quite simplified, uh, but this is what it boils down to. So you've got an internal resistance and then you've got this capacitor in parallel with another resistor. Now for the internal resistance testing, we're just measuring the voltage at the terminals of the battery, and then we apply a load. And the typical standard for this, particularly with lead acid batteries, is using two test resistors. So you apply a small load, and then you switch in a larger load. And since we know what these two resistor values are, when we measure the voltage drop that occurs due to the extra load, we can work out what the internal resistance is from that. And then the cold cranking amps, um, normally uses an AC type test. So you apply a frequency, typically 90 or 1000 hertz, measure the current, and then also again measure the voltage on there, and we can measure the AC conductance using that method. Now, that's often used. Um, I didn't read the values on this particular unit, but what they could be doing is also just reading um, the internal resistance, which they've already calculated, and then doing the battery voltage divided by internal resistance to get some kind of idea as to the maximum short circuit current that this battery could be capable of. Now our clamps are pretty heavy duty, they've got quite a lot of clamping force, and they're also using the four wire sensing method as you'd expect. So there is a terminal here which goes to quite a thick uh, conductor that goes back to the unit, and all of the current when we're doing the testing goes through this side of the clamp, and then we've got a little sense wire here which goes off to the other side and that makes sure that we don't have any voltage drop across the leads that would then cause us to get our readings out of spec. Um, so that's quite good, it's, they're doing everything right here. Um, the unit itself it seems to be fairly well made, and it's got this rubber sleeve, which I think is probably hiding a couple of screws. We can see some screws here. So let's just take this off and have a look inside. So it turns out to be pretty straightforward. They're just switching in and out a 10 ohm load resistor using this little SOT23 MOSFET over here. Uh, now we've got quite a few diodes and stuff over here, reverse polarity protection diode, we've also got a fuse, and then we've got a transient suppression diode here after the fuse. So basically if we see some big spikes, it will blow that fuse. Uh, it is very common to see some high vo voltage transients in an automotive system. So these systems have to be capable of um, either dealing with them or clamping them and blowing a fuse so that you don't get further damage on the PCB. Then we've got a Schottky diode that then goes into this book regulator here, which provides our 3.3 volt supply for this Nation N32G455 microcontroller, which is basically an ARM Cortex M4 processor. Probably most of that is being used for driving the graphic LCD module on the front here. Um, but also it has a fairly decent ADC, it looks like it's got a 12-bit ADC, uh, which has been used to do the analog sensing. And in terms of the analog sensing, the sense wires from the battery come into here, and we've got a quad op amp here which is doing a differential measurement of uh, these two channels here, and that's being fed into the ADC on the microcontroller. And that's about it really, there's not a huge amount in here because it is a fairly straightforward measurement, especially if you're only measuring uh, using a resistive load like this. So I'll have a quick look on the PicoScope to see what the waveforms look like when we do a battery test. Right, so we've got the battery voltage in blue here, just sitting slightly above 12 volts, and the current being drawn by the battery tester in yellow. So let's run a battery test on the unit. And there it's begun testing.
and the whole test looks like it takes around eight seconds. Now we've got a really deep memory on the picoscope so we can zoom in on that and let's have a look at the waveform in a bit more detail. So the test frequency is about 200 hertz approximately and we're drawing about 1.15 amps for the test. Now we don't see much of a change on the battery voltage and that frequency also remains constant for that entire test so it's not doing anything more than just pulsing about one amp through that battery and measuring the change in voltage here. Now given the measurement was pretty straightforward and didn't use any of the AC test methods for measuring the cold cranking amps capability of the battery and also the battery voltage divided by the internal resistance doesn't give us 71 CCA. So I think what they're doing is they've probably stored a whole bunch of tables in that flash chip that was on the PCB and they probably tested under a whole wide range of conditions on some reference batteries they know what the temperature is, I suspect there's a temperature sensor on the PCB, and then they can correlate these two values here to the cold cranking amps of the battery without having to do a more complicated measurement on the system that would then require more electronics. So that's a quick look at the BT200 battery tester from Top Don. I'll put a link to this item in the description down below. If you've got any thoughts or comments about it, don't forget to leave them in the comments section down below. Also, don't forget to visit our sponsor, JLC PCB. Hope you enjoyed the video and until next time, thanks for watching.